Welcome to the fourth part of Uhu's Jagged Tutorials and the first part of the fourth part. Because if I would have done one part, it would have taken about 45 minutes and that doesn't feel right for a YouTube clip. So, first part of the fourth part, welcome! In part four, we will focus on chain techniques. And in the first part of the fourth part, we will focus on the individual playing uh, techniques, on the basics of chain play, on the stance, for example, how to swing the chain and so forth. Um, and for the theory part, I have chosen to focus on different styles of jugger because there's not one correct style, not one right style of playing jugger. There are many styles. It's a very interesting topic indeed. Um, in the second part, we will focus on partner chain training, that is partner against the chain, uh, uh, staff against the chain, longsword and shield against the chain. And for the theory part, um, we will focus on the history of Jugger, where it comes from, and why the dog skull is in fact a dog skull, according to the editor and screenwriter um, who did invent our sport that we play today. It is also a very special part for me, because we just had our Jern Svenskan Turnering, Jern Boas Finchestrand, and that was really a special event because there were 10 teams, two teams were coming from Ireland, a lot of teams were coming from Germany, and even one team was coming from Australia. So I'm really, really impressed, folks, that you all made it here, and I hope to see you again next year. And this tournament was even more special for me personally, because this shirt that you see here is the first ever shirt of my old first team. And why am I wearing my first shirt? Well, because the whole team that was here is in fact my old team, both players who are currently playing and players who have played in my old team. They were coming undercover. Die Lieblings Berliner, first place and winner of the... I also want to say thanks to Australia and to the Czechs for allowing me to use their YouTube clips on Jagger Styles and of course to David Edwards who has done fantastic chain tutorials. As you can see we have quite a sunny day today and it's something like the first day of the last days where uh, the sun finally came out and allowed us to record our intro finally so that I can now release uh, the fourth part, part one of U's tutorials. Now beginning with the chain. Welcome, have fun and train hard. We see you in I would like to show you some basics of chain play and uh, some basic defenses and attacks against the staff, the shield and the long sword. I also would like to recommend the fantastic chain tutorial that David Edwards has done from the team Satanta from Ireland. You will find that on YouTube. Check it out. Um, there are many short clips, about one minute each. So when you're starting with the chain, there are some things to keep in mind. It's very important, as with every spar, to check your, your pomp verb before you are playing with it. And as you can see, the first meter in Germany, at least, uh, depends on the rule book, should be padded for safety. Um, the problem is that these parts often just happen to fly away, and so you have to replace them. And replacing is quite easy. We do it like that. We take um, this bit of plastic and wrap it around the chain link, like that, and then we take some tape, like this, yeah, very, very comfortable, a strong tape, and put that away, and just wrap around the tape over the plastic, and ready you are with your fantastic new chain. The grip, how to hold the chain. Well, you're holding the chain by clutching the grip and then what you can do is extending the two fingers, lying in the other chain like this and stretching it. Very important, stretch it. And when you're shooting, then you just release this grip but still hold to your grip so you don't lose your chain. I would recommend to have gloves that are not like this here but that give a bit better grip here because otherwise it can happen that the chain just slips out of your fingers. The next thing you should keep in mind 
is to hold the chain between your hand outstretched tight. So just shorten it a bit so it feels right, because if you're holding it loosely, then it can happen that the chain itself just swings into your face, and that's not nice at all. Where exactly you are holding the chain itself is completely up to you, of course. There are players that like to have a long chain, so hold it like, uh, like this here, and then to swing it. And there are players, most players, I think, are holding it short, like this, so they can get going quickly. And there are even players who enjoy to hold it on the padding, which is not very common and which is a bit awkward. As for the speed of the chain, if you have, are holding the chain short, then you have quite a high speed chain. That's very good, very nice to swing. Um, then you can hold it very short. You will see that when you are doing a pin, that's like this. You cannot pin with the chain, but it can be very intimidating, like with that. And then, of course, you have the long chain. And to get the, the chain long, after holding it short, just let the links glide through your hand and elongate it. Draw the links through your hand until you have reached the length that you feel most comfortable with, like this. As with the other spars that I've shown in the first jacket tutorial, we have also a basic stance for the chain, or one that you could use and which should fit good, uh, well. Uh, it's the same like with every spar, you should stay stable like this, so don't stay outstretched like that, but go uh, a bit down so it feels just well. The other thing that you can do is to take the foot back of the hand holding the chain. Reason being, when you are shooting the chain against your opponent, then you can gain more range through stepping forward with that foot. When you are shooting, then the foot comes out and shoot. Looking from the side, the same thing, so stay just comfortable and stable so that you can move in any direction. The foot, this foot back and when you are shooting out the chain, then just step forward and shoot. When you are swinging the chain, the problem might be that you are, well, that you are quite tired after a short while. Um, to avoid that, don't make this with your arm. Don't operate the chain with your whole arm or with your shoulder. It's even not very good for your uh, health, for your shoulder, so it's not nice for your body. Instead, um, you can move the chain with your wrists. Also, that needs some training so that you don't uh, get exhausted uh, too quickly. Um, but the best way, I think, beside the wrist, is to move your whole body with the chain. I am overdoing it a bit here, uh, so you can see it. But if you are just moving your whole body, then you see that the chain is going sort of automatically, and you can just do it uh, for as long as you wish. There are two kinds of chain swings, or two main kinds, let's say so. One, uh, one swing is the vertical swing, that's this one here, and the other one is the horizontal swing, like this. And when you are doing the horizontal swing, you are trying to get your opponent by slinging the chain around him, while when you are doing the vertical swing, then you are trying to hit your opponent with a straight shot, like that. So these are the two main chain techniques, the vertical swing and the horizontal swing. Shooting off the chain, you should sort of throw it, and you are throwing it with the hand that releases the chain. This one will release the chain. Don't hold the chain when you're throwing it, that's not very nice, but just shoot it. And uh, to shoot it against your opponent, you should uh, operate your whole body. It's not just your arm throwing the chain, no. It is your whole body that is doing the attack, for example, like this. Going forward, outstretch. Releasing the chain and throwing it forward. You're pointing uh, against your opponent, trying to hit him. Sort of like casting something against him. But at the same time, this hand here is not just releasing the chain and it's not just giving, adding some more power to the chain itself, but it also guides the chain where it should hit. If you want to hit your opponent on the upper body, then you will sort of point with this hand to his upper body, like that. If you want to hit your opponent on the feet or on the legs, more on the legs of course, then you just point down with your 
releasing hand to his feet, like that, and you will get it done. And point with the releasing hand to the area where you want to strike your opponent. When you're in a game and you're waiting for the start, then many chain players are holding their chain like that here, or even a bit shorter like that, but I personally prefer if you hold it like this here. And with this one, it's quite easy to get the chain going at the starting cut, so you can just get off and swing. Well, the problem is often, if your chain gets parried by someone, then you have to get it going again. And often, uh, how fast you are with that will decide whether you get hit or whether you will hit yourself someone. So that means get the chain going when it's down on the ground is a crucial thing. How do we do that? If you are hitting someone, and your chain loses momentum. You are taking your chain here at the other hand because you know where your other hand is. You might not know where your chain is. You take it at the other hand, let the links glide through the hand. After a while, take the chain again by almost taking your release hand like this because you might not know where your chain is, but you know where your hand is. So take the chain here right at the release hand, draw the links in so that it feels comfortable and get it going. The only problem is, if you are doing it like I've done now, like this, then it's, oh, it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of power. You might get very tired by this. Therefore, you will have to support your chain getting momentum with your whole body. And what you can do there is just dancing with your chain, I would say. So, first you take your chain like I've shown here, then you are going around with your body, stretching it, and here we go, you have the momentum. And how did we do that? Most important, when you're gripping the chain, stretch out your arm. At the same time you're turning your body with the arm outstretched, because then you get much more momentum than if you just stay here, of course. So stretch it out, grip your chain again with the other hand, and you are ready, back in the game, and can shoot when you wish. That is a very important maneuver, and when you're starting in the line, you can do that as well at the beginning of a game. Um, just be a bit careful there, because control over the chain and over your body is not that easy when you're starting to run and continuing to run. So an example for the starting draw is, you're standing in the line, don't forget to stretch out your arm, and when you're starting, just turn it around your body and swing the chain with the power of your whole body, not only with the arm. For training, I would recommend that you take a line on the floor and that you use it for orientation um, so that you know that you are going straight and not just a bit to the left or to the right so that you could hit your own planes, which would not be very nice. So just try to swing the chain as straight as possible while at the same time drawing it around your body and drawing, spinning your body around at a fast pace. That needs some training, but you will enjoy it, be sure. What is crucial, of course, when your chain is down, is getting distance to your opponent, if your opponent has not been hit, so that he cannot hit you. And to achieve this, you are taking your chain as usual, but at this time we'll run back when we are getting the chain going, like that. just back from a fantastic jugger training and I would like to use this evening to tell you something about the history of jugger. When I did my research for my first jugger book I found the history of jugger very interesting and even today it is quite a thing because many conflicts that may turn up today if you post something on the main jugger forums in Germany for example Many of these conflicts and tensions, they root back into the history of the sport of jugger. And if we look at the history, then we see that there is not just one sport of jugger, or not one style of jugger. There are many different styles. And every style is a style in its own right. For example, the Czechs have a fantastic post-apocalyptic style. Watch the video on YouTube from the 2015 tournament. It's very interesting and very stunning indeed. Ano, ano. Ale pozor, kdykoliv ještě neopustili kruh, 
Ale to, že tě zákuma tyčařům nevadí. Ne, ne, ne. Then we have the LARP style, the live role-playing style, um, for example from Antgard in the US, but just even today Jugger is part of live role-playing events. And then we have the Sport Jugger style, maybe the most well-known by now. Even the Sport Jugger style has different styles by itself. For example, we have the German style, which has become more or less the international style, you could say, for tournaments. Um, and then you have the Australian style. And the Australian style is quite different from the German Jugger style, because the quicks are starting in a circle and the other players are engaging each other after the ball has left this circle. So quite a different approach than the 5 against 5 charging attack that we know from the most well-known sport jugger star. So there is not one style, there are many styles. And where does jugger come from? That is also quite unique. topic of spars I would just like to share a thought on the uh, terminology and that is that in fact Pomfen are no weapons of course because we do not want to hurt someone in fact we want especially not to hurt someone we just want to win and we want to hit hard but without any injuries um, Pomfen and spars are not even copies of weapons like in LARP role playing where you have artificial swords because uh, the copies which they are are in fact from the film playing gear, like with lacrosse and stuff like that, you can hurt people with them, but they are not designed to hurt people in the first place. In the first place, they are designed to win the game and not to break bones, even if in the film that might happen. It's a bit as if you would say to a spoon, this is a weapon. A spoon is not a weapon until you use it to hurt someone. Um, then it becomes a weapon. And the same applies for the pomp. And even more important, if you speak of weapons, just consider which picture is transferred to the public. Another thought on a pomp that came to me during Jern Svenskan tournering was that very lightweight spars have come up. And in fact, you can hit very, 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 very fast and do the ventilator or the helicopter if you wish. But on the other hand, well, I fear that something gets lost. I fear that the real technical side of Jugger might get lost there. It's a bit like with fencing. If you have an ultra lightweight sword, then it's no problem to hit someone. But if you have a normal sword of 500 gram or something, then it, it requires training. And I just hope that the ultra light spars do not spread too much so that people still have to train and are training to build up their competence in fighting with their spars. The sportive aspect, I think, should not be lost. Also, that it does not come down to charging and only speed to win a game, but to excel in your own spa. That should be the main part. One other thought that is connected to the last Jagger tutorial, to the rules theory. Um, be careful when you are interpreting the rules, at least for the tournament training. Uh, of course, in your own trainings, it is essential for Jagger just to try out everything to play your own style of Jagger. And don't just look which rule could be stretched uh, for you so it fits you better, because stretching rules has bad effects on the thickness of rule books and on the atmosphere uh, on the field. We do not want to have a 300 page rule book, uh, a small one is absolutely okay. Thank you for watching the first part of Ooze Jagger Tutorials number 4. See you there and if you like the video please uh, like it on YouTube and share it on Facebook and on other platforms. N -technique, uh, uh, N -tech so N-Technique...